A beautiful sunny day here. Couldn't ask for a better day for a good DIY project. So this is first of many, many videos to come here at Bleaton Heart Homestead in Washington State. Uh, we do raise lots of different animals for lots of different purposes, but today we're going to focus on butchering. Uh, these are boer goats that we raise for butchering for meat. Uh, I don't know if anybody haven't had goat. They are a delicious, very lean, lean meat. Lots of good proteins, really low in fat. Um, if you once you had goat, probably won't want to go back to beef. Uh, so this is going to be my video from from pasture to freezer. Um, I'm not going to video dispatching these animals. Just not something I really feel comfortable doing. So uh, the next video is going to be. Now, I'll dispatch one of these goats, I'll have them in the shop, then I'm going to go through all the tools and the books and everything that I personally use, and then we'll go through skinning and cleaning the goats, and the process for butchering them, and just how I like to do it. Uh, so this is part one of, of the butchering video. Uh, these are the guys we'll be butchering today. They're both uh, just about a year old. We have another one that's a year and a half. Uh, again, this is first of many, many video series. Uh, we, we're going to be doing lots of different DIY videos. Uh, we're kind of learning as we go here. Um, so this is butchering boer goats. All right, so I can do a quick rundown of all the tools that I use for butchering here. Just got your basic freezer paper. You got your basic tape for just sealing everything up. You got your marker for labeling. I got two different knives, one for cutting the paper. These are actual butchering knives, so these break apart so you can actually sharpen the blades, keep them really clean. That comes in handy. This is a ceramic sharpening stone. Just made this handle the other day from a junk 2x4 that was lying around because I didn't have anything to, as a handle. A couple of skinning knives, my actual butchering knives. Then you have your big meat cleaver, bone saw, a couple different foil tins so you can store the meat, kind of keep everything out of the way. Keep your workspace less cluttered. Bleach wipes, I like to wipe everything down before I use it. And then also if I'm butchering multiple animals, I will wash everything in between animals. I just don't like to take the chance of cross-contaminating something that another animal might have, especially if you're doing different species. Um, then you've got the, the book here. This is kind of the best book to have, really, if you're going to be butchering for yourself. The Whole Beast Butchery. This has great pictures, great details of breaking down the animals, and then a big butcher block. Now, I just use my regular old woodworking bench, but all I do is I wrap the whole thing in wax paper. So that's all you really need. So uh, I'll put links to all the knives, all the saws, everything I have in the description. So if you're looking at purchasing everything. I try to do everything on a budget. So these aren't the best, but they're not the cheapest. So again, I'll put links for everything. You don't need a whole, you don't need to spend a ton if you're doing this by yourself. Just make do with what you got. So the next video is going to be skinning the goat. All right, so we got the goat dispatch. We got them in the shop. Uh, first thing I like to do is remove the head, remove the front legs, and then I like to hang them over a trash can. Uh, this way I can, I can get in here and as I'm moving everything, I'm moving my way down the goat, everything falls right into the bag. Quick, easy cleanup, kind of keeps everything at a minimum, and then that way, if there is anything you want to keep, you can set it aside. So this is where I'm going to start. Right now, I just have a come along up here that I use, so I can ratchet him up as I'm working my way down. So my workspace is right in front of me, and I can get leverage on it. I don't have to worry about him coming back down. Eventually, I'm going to get a hydraulic lift put in. This this works for the time being. So we'll get the give our sharpening uh, get a good sharp edge started here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make our way. We're going to start from here. We're going to start skinning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll start from here, make our way back. We'll make two incisions, run down each leg. We'll go down here and I'll show you the how I actually go through and go around the backside keep of it. So that way I'll pull all of his entrails in. So we'll just kind of start out here on the leg and make our way down. Start skinning them out. So now this is one thing that you get back here to the backside. You want to cut this out. And this will make pulling it out later, later a lot easier. Once you cut around the back side, I usually just use a zip tie. Use whatever you want. Cinch this up. So now later, when we're getting ready to pull his innards out, this will all just come right down out of the inside of the goat. Cut off this little bit of extra tab here. Okay, now we'll continue skinning down. Now once you kind of got past here, it'll be a lot easier. Now you're going to have a little bit of hair up here, but once here, as you keep your way down, now the goat's actually going to stay clean. There'll be almost no hair left behind. We'll still give it a good wipe down later on, but uh, it keeps it pretty clean as you go. So now we've got it pretty much done. Now we're going to be down to the guts. Just got to be real careful here. stomach here without splitting anything open. You can tell this guy's been eating pretty good all day. Make sure you wash 
cans right here where you need it. way down here. Now if you wanted to, if you're going to make, uh, if you're going to recover any liver or kidneys or anything like that, now would be a time to do it. And just continue to kind of help everything fall out here. Make your way down through. No cuts at a time. And everything drops right in the trash can. So here's our old rundown. He's all skinned out. He's all done here. So you can see the carcass comes out really clean this way. All the hide keeps off, there's almost no hair. There's a little bit up top, obviously, where you started up here that you're gonna have to kind of clean. But for the most part, this carcass is pretty stripped down. So now we're gonna let it hang overnight, firm up a little bit, and then tomorrow we'll come back through and uh, we'll actually start cutting this thing up. So the next video will be taking him from hanging to uh, cutting him up, prepping him for the freezer. All right, so this goat's been hanging overnight. So now this meat's all firmed up. It's gonna make it a lot easier to butcher. Um, we're just going to kind of focus on one area, kind of break this thing down, make it a little bit more manageable. Uh, we're going to start with, first thing we want to do is we want to remove this neck. Some people like to keep a bone-in roast. That's totally up to each person's own preference. So first off, we're going to start off with get this neck meat out of here. So make a good cut all the way down through. This makes a good roast. Uh, if you want to leave the bone in, we like to cut this off. I don't really like. We did roast with a couple of goats. Didn't really care for the meat as much that way, so we actually will cube this up. Set that aside. Okay. So the next section we're going to do here is we're going to want to move the front section of this goat. So we're going to go inside. We're going to go in between the fifth and sixth ribs. Or so we got one, two, three, four, five, and six make our incision follow that rib up all the way up and through same thing on the other side one, two, three, four, five, and six Is 
decision. meat as you can with your knife. You don't want to cut cutting tissue with your saw. Now once we're cutting down through here, give it a good mark so we know where we're headed. So now you're going to want your bone saw. And once you get all the way down through the bone, it off with your knife. All right, so we'll slide this out of the way. So here's going to be what we're going to focus on for now. now. I personally like to keep a little bucket over here to the side. We don't like to waste any of this goat, so all the fat trimmings, anything that we can actually give to the dogs, we actually have a little bucket. We set everything aside. We want to use every bit of this goat possible. All right, so now we got the front quarters off, we got the neck off, we got everything split. So we're just going to follow the book here. So now the next piece is we're going to go ahead and remove these front legs. So we're going to get these front shoulders off. So we're going to cut down. There's really not a whole lot of anything. You're just going to follow the shoulder blade all the way down. Here's our front shoulders. So now we're just down to front quarter here with the ribs. So now we're going to take this, we're going to finish splitting this breastbone all the way down. take our saw, we're going to run right down the middle, split these ribs in two. We're going to come back to them, but I figured, you know what, let's just do this one cut at a time and make our way through the whole animal here. So we're going to go ahead and cut down and break down our, our chops. So we've got both of these corners, quarter pieces here, the ribs up front. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come through, we're going to follow each one of these down. We're just going to cut down through the very center of the meat here. And then we're going to kind of continue on and just kind of score each piece of this bone so we know where to run our saw blade. So then we're going to run our saw. Right down through each of these bones here. And then we'll make our chops.
know what? That might make too many shavings. I'm afraid that's going to make quite a big mess here. So I'm going to think I'm going to take my meat cleaver and I'm going to try to cleaver these off. Never done it this way. I'm going to give it a whirl here. So that gives you, you can see the chops here on the end, got a lot more meat to them, a lot thicker cuts. Uh, these other ones, a little bit sm smaller pieces, you only get a real thin piece of meat, put these on the grill, super, super tender, cook a medium rare, absolutely delicious. Okay, so what we're going to break down now, we're going to go ahead and break down the center section. So now we're going to cut between the 12th and 13th ribs. Up the ribs here. through as much of the meat as we can. We're going to take our saw. center saddle section here. Get these little pieces out of the way here. I'm going to try not to waste anything on the goat. Set that aside for the dogs. Okay, so now some people like to go through and like cut each of these ribs out and leave them and leave this little piece of meat down here at the base. We tried that one year and we didn't care for it very much. Uh, so we're just going to split this and again we're just going to make a real thin set of chops. So then typically with these ones you know you don't get a whole lot of meat but it is super super tender really really good meat. So what we'll end up doing with this is each person will get like a whole section of ribs and we'll do with a couple of good sides. So it just makes it a good full meal. So we're just going to cut these just like the chops. Going to go right down the middle of each rib. This other side. Just continue your lines. Use that later for 
ground. Just to get it out of our way here. All right, so now that we've got these cut, all the way down through. Make sure the meat's cut all the way down to the bone. I think we're gonna go ahead and meat cleaver seemed to work pretty good. I think we're gonna stick with with meat cleaver this time. This is only the second time I've ever butchered a whole goat, so I'm still kind of learning as I go. I just nice thing about doing it on your own. There's no wrong way of doing it because you're doing it the way you uh, whatever works for you. So we'll actually cook them like that, so you almost have kind of like a whole round sphere there. Kids seem to like them, wife likes them, so we're just going to go with it. Okay, so here we are on the back session of the goat. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do, I kind of wanted to show this, that if you never butchered a goat, the fat on a goat really kind of solidifies, and it's amazing. It, just peels off the skin once you let these things hang and some people can cook with it I've heard of some people making soap with it it does break down you can feel pretty fatty but it holds a pretty hard hard uh, texture to it even right from just peeling it off and you can just peel it off I mean it comes off very very easily um, if, if you've never had goat and you hear people say I don't like goat meat it tastes goaty they probably didn't eat very well trimmed meat uh, if you leave some of this on, especially if they butchered a, a, a buck, it's going to give you a very bucky, bucky flavor, and you will, you'll know it'll it'll uh, you'll know you're eating goat. Now, if you can get rid of a lot of this fat, it is it really takes on whatever seasonings you put in it. That's what my family likes. It's a very mild tasting meat. Um, as you can see from cleaning this animal, there's not a lot of fat on a goat. Uh, they mainly store a lot of it in their stomachs, so a lot of it's not really on the animal. It's stored in the animal, so. You know, unfortunately, you do lose a lot of weight. Um, you don't get as much weight from a goat as you would a lot of other animals, but we, we just enjoy raising them, and we enjoy the, the, the flavor of the meat and just knowing where our food comes from. So, next step, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove these flaps. If you look right here, these are your porterhouse steaks. Now, these are the most tender, just absolutely delicious part of the steaks. So, we're going to want to cut each of these flaps off. We're going to separate it from the pelvis, and then... Uh, Sometimes, you know, we can, if you split down the spine this way, you can have little tiny porterhouses, kind of like that. This is such a small animal, and we got three goats to butcher. What we're going to do like we did before is we're going to find each one of these little spots on the spine. So we're just going to make each one of these is going to be like a whole medallion type of steak. Uh, if you take these, wrap them in bacon, a little rosemary, a little thyme, a little salt and pepper, mm, absolutely delicious steaks. So let's get this skin off of here and get this thing broken down. You can use a lot of this, you can pull off a lot of this fat, um, but what I'm actually going to try this time, I've never done it, um, but I was just thinking this is really thin, I'm going to try to actually make in some jerky. So I'm going to pull all the fat off of this, set the fat aside, and throw it on the dehydrator and try to make some, some goat jerky out of that meat. See how that tastes. Always want to, when you're looking at these, because this is your best cut, is really follow the outer edge the best that you can so you're not getting into the really good meat on your steaks here. Set that aside for later. Alright, so now I'm going to kind of peel some of this fat and we'll still still be cleaning this off before I wrap it. This is just to kind of get the goat broken down here. Alright, so now we want to bring in our bone saw. And if you kind of feel with your fingers, you'll actually feel both hip bones right here. So you're going to go right behind those, and that's where we're going to want to split this all the way down here to the pelvis. So we're going to mark it. I like to just drag all the way across here. All the way around the whole back. So you're cutting all the way down, following your line. Now this is a little too thick to go through with the with my cleaver there, so we'll go ahead and use the saw on this one. Again, 
and once you start hearing that you're gotten through the bone, stop using the bone saw, go back to using your knife. Just because you clean your cut, won't make as much of a mess, easier on the blades. Alright, I'll set this aside here. Now if you look, you can see here, you have just these really nice tender pieces of steak right through here. So I'm going to kind of pull some of this fat and some of this down here out of the middle. It makes it a little easier to see each one of the little spots on the spine so that you can go right through and hit each one of those so that you're splitting it right down the middle. So let's see if I can get some of this cleaned up here and trim these out. down with your finger you can feel each where the bone drops on each part of the spine here. This right here it's a pretty good sized steak so that would so normally when I have people try goat for the first time this is the cut that I try to let them taste this is super super tender some of the best tasting meat on the entire goat in my opinion so go ahead and get to the rest of these and then we'll start breaking down those hind quarters Alright, so now we're in the last section of the goat here, the last part of the hind section. So at this point, we do still have a little bit of some really nice tender steaks back here. So what we want to do is we want to split this. We're actually going to split it right down the middle, and then we're going to kind of debone and remove everything off of here. And I typically will use the entire back quarter. Um, I'll cut up and debone everything out of each leg, and I'll just chop it in chunks. I'll leave one of them as a boneless roast, and then that's what we normally do, but I think this time I'm just going to chop everything up since we have so many goats to butcher. Uh, I think I'm just going to do minced meat out of this entire goat. So if it's not steaks or chops, it's going to be chopped up and we're going to make cubed meat out of it, uh, minus a few steaks. So now we're going to split this down the center here with a saw, and then we're going to split right through the spine, and then we're going to break it in two pieces, cut a couple more steaks out. as much of the meat as we can here. Pull down the line. And I'm sure you've probably heard him on there. My dog knows that I'm getting about done. He's just excited because he knows what it means when I'm butchering time comes. It means he knows he's getting treats for dinner. So he's over there yawning, making sure everybody can hear him. split down. So normally what I'll do is like this part up here makes some really nice steaks. So I'll cut through this, start removing all this muscle, kind of go from there. So if you want to make roast, you can make roast. If you want to make steaks, you can make steaks. It's totally up to you. It's one good thing about butchering by yourself. So that's pretty much it. That's a breakdown of a goat. Get to this point. Um, really it's the breakdown of this whole goat when you're not trying to do a video and kind of talk everybody through it. Um, you can really actually break down a goat and not wrap everything, but you can break this whole goat down and have it ready for meals in, in under an hour. Um, I'll put links to everything in the descriptions for everything that I use, all my tools, everything I have. Um, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll have lots more videos to come. Uh, probably won't show any more butchering videos with this one until I get really, really good at it. Then I'll probably have a quick one to show you how fast you can break them down. See you guys next time.